happen at greatly increased flexibility. We bomb Gaddafi's home! And as a weapon of greatly increased flexibility. Alrighty. Yes. We're here at Substandard Atomics with Steve Timblin. <laughs> and we're going to be working on his, what year is this? 70? Yeah, 70. 70 Dodge D200. And as you can see, we've already gotten the heart and motor out. And apparently it's bleeding. No but problem. we're gonna we're gonna fix that here later. We gotta cut these out, and you're gonna see what we're doing. All right. This is how you approach a Dodge. See, you just jump head first right into the engine bay. There's room. Enjoy that. I hate little baby ducks. All Chevy trucks. Everything that lives and breathes <laughs> and trees. All right. So you gonna knock this out off first. Yeah, be sure you put that where he hits it with his uh, hits the camera with his elbow. No more, no more than about eight times. As a proper cutting technique, right here. Take it out. Mm, a little okay. more than kinda. Can you zoom in on that? How bad is bad? Bad. Uh, See, when you have round teeth, you cut better. <laughs> All right. So take one there was a little, a little rough there. Uh, apparently, you gotta have a sawzall blade that's decent to cut. So we're gonna use one that's got no teeth. No teeth. We're gonna cut it with a piece of steel. No. With grit on the edge. Nope, nope, no, there's no grit. We're gonna let the audience wonder. <laughs> We're gonna make them think. Shh, confuse them. All right. Well, what you're gonna do instead is annoy them and then they tune to something else. Oh, <sighs> come on, that's no fun. Oh. Oh. So, cut off a leg, right? Yeah, or something. That would be pretty gruesome with a sawzall. Mm, yeah, and worse with a carbide bit with a carbide blade. <laughs> You'd be sitting there for 15 minutes. <laughs> it's painful. That is practicing sawzall safety. Shoot the blade away from you. It's actually a sawzall gun. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna check this out here. I believe that blade would be a little warm there, Pilgrim. Check this out. Look, look at it. Look at it work. Putting it in. How to put in sawzall blade for everybody out there that's never. Had to put a sawzall blade in, and then you're gonna crank it down on it like no tomorrow. Crank! Yeah. All right, now back to the action. I wish we could just take and make sparks effects right now. Done. Yep. It's doing better than the other one was. That's a little Marty Carlisle spring. I like how it shakes. Oh yeah, one down. Two to go. Two to go. Robert versus the exhaust bolts. Sawzall edition. Now be aware, 
Sometimes well, you have to. Well, you don't hurt the truck's feelings. It's bleeding. <laughs> or it's its time of the month. Uh, that's not good. No, that's not good. That's not good, truck. <laughs> I think we need to cotton it up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Shannon, that was horrible. <laughs> no. It's okay. Now, digging up dirt, looking for worms. Oh, is that a carnivore worm? Huh? Carnivore worm? Yeah. Yeah. Worm. worm. The killer worm. Annoying Noise, brought to you by Hardee's. This is how to properly install a flywheel, any kind of your machine surfaces that are put in any kind of packaging that has any kind of protectant to keep it from rusting. You need to get that off, especially if you're going to use any kind of brand new plug or whatnot. Stuff that cause you to slip and slide and ruin your brand new clutch disc. So do it. We'll die. Or else. Probably not die. Don't die. That's bad. Well, if you blow up the if you blow up the clutch trying to just hogging on the gas while it's slipping, you could probably die if it blew apart. Is he talking about something else other than him that needs an ass wash? Took my deal, city. So I guess you. Oh, yeah, it has a different little pattern, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Three, six, and then Robert throws it. That's got to be in the film. Well, it's going to be. Alright. You got a good throw out there? Yeah, it's right there. Let's sit in the truck. Okay. It, Assuming it has not rusted inside the truck. It was good when it came out. Okay. It's actually American made, so it's probably better than most of what I can buy now. Why didn't they ever install the Hemi into a commercial vehicle? They did. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Like the 426? Yeah. Really? Well, all the Hemis were built by the industrial section. Well, the main reason that they wouldn't is because the Hemi is not very torquey. The Hemi's got a head that breathes well at high RPM, but it doesn't have a whole lot of torque in the low end. That's also why a 440 car would wipe the would wipe the floor with a Hemi car on the street. Well, you need a Hemi truck because you got a pool on the top end. I don't quite understand your logic. <laughs> it doesn't have to work. It's just they should have did it. <laughs> like they have dump trucks with Hemi's in them. That makes total sense, right? No. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You just put stupid gears in it, like 513s or 5 plus gears. That doesn't make any sense. Yes. No, it doesn't. So then it has to turn way up in the granny low and you get the power band about 5,000 as you're rolling two and a half mile an hour. And then, of course, you wear out everything and. So three years of running it. You got a hemi. <laughs> I wonder why Cadillac was the only one to dare to go to big cubic inches. Because everybody else said, hey, wait a minute. We don't need all these cubic inches. We can just engineer our stuff a little better. And 
enough of that thing in my face. <sighs> All right, some All right. bolts. Well, now we got to snug them and we've got to get a torque wrench out here and torque them. Torque wrench! Torque wrench! This is bro, right? Yeah, mine's tough. Gonna need one, yeah.